everyone, here is Obukemis once again, and today I'm going to talk about something that interests me quite a lot. If you've watched some other of my videos, you probably understand the kind of literature I'm into. This is possibly the first of a very short series of videos where I talk about postmodernist fiction. In this video, I'm going to discuss a few theories of what postmodernist fiction is and is not because this is a, a term you see used so many times to refer to so many different writers and if you are a bit of a Nazi genre like me that makes you cringe a tiny bit and I'm going to discuss and suggest two or three key readings if you are interested in the topic, if you are either a casual reader or a literary like student uh, or whatever that you should definitely check out if you're interested in postmodernist literature and I'm talking about academic non-fiction texts. I maybe I will maybe film a video about essential fiction postmodernist texts. Now the first thing that needs to be said about postmodernism is that differently from modernism, high modernism like Woolf and Joyce, no one really knows what postmodernist fiction is. If people claim they have a clue that's the first, like, the, the way to know they are posers and they don't know anything about the topic. Everybody and their uncle has a theory on what postmodernist fiction is, and there are some shared elements that all theories share, but yeah, the whole genre is a bit of a mess. Now, if you ask people, even casual readers, to define postmodernism in fiction, unless they really don't know anything about it, they'll probably tell you that it's a kind of fiction that is kinda silly at times, that it's very borderline crazy and tricky where like sometimes the story either doesn't exist, the book is plotless or the characters are like representations of emotions but not real people where perhaps the author addresses the reader himself or herself where the fourth wall is broken every three pages and those are all things that kind of happen in postmodernist fiction but that's not the main point. Now, as far as postmodernist literature is concerned, to me, the only bible on the topic, the book that really changed the way I look at the whole genre is this thing, Postmodernist Fiction by Brian McHale. This is a seminal text on the topic and every fan of the genre, even if they study engineering and they don't know anything about literary theory, this is not about literary theory in the bad sense, this is about books, should read this book, should read postmodernist fiction. Now, the claim Brian McHale makes is that the point of postmodernist fiction is its dominant. Postmodernism as a ontological dominant. What does that mean? It sounds bad, but it's not. It means that postmodernist fiction is mostly concerned with questions about worlds. How do I change from one world to another? How do I experience the shift between different worlds? How do which one of myself experience this shift? How do I explain this? Imagine you are a man or woman, whatever you want, living in the America of the 1950s which is where postmodernism was pretty much born. Um, you get up in the morning, you turn on your TV while you're having breakfast, and you see the news, and you hear a story about a celebrity, and you fantasize about this celebrity who knows how her life really is, who knows what she's doing. Then you drive to work, and you listen to the radio on your car, and you listen to a hit by of the Beatles, maybe it's the 1960s, let's say, and it makes you think about last summer and an adventure you got last summer and so you fantasize about that. When you're at work, you daydream about other stuff, then you get back home and you and your girlfriend um, discuss something, but after dinner you watch a James Bond movie and you're living in the world of James Bond for a while. What's the point in all this? In today's world, we are constantly soaked in what Don DeLillo, in one of the best postmodern novels of all times, poignantly called white noise. In today's world, we keep shifting from one world to the other, from one situation to the next constantly. Every time you look at the cover of a book, uh, you listen to an album, you watch TV, that's the main main big enemy here, and your friend, uh, whatever you want to call it, whether you listen to the radio, you constantly shift between all these different worlds. It's not like that didn't happen in the past, but it didn't happen so well, ubiquitously, so all the time. Postmodernist fiction looks like it has nothing to do with realism, looks like 
literature had always held the mirror to reality, now it stopped. Postmodernist fiction is not realist, it has nothing to do with actual representation of the lives of people. But in that, it's especially realist and it holds the mirror to our contemporary reality. In a postmodernist novel, for instance, you may have characters reading a story and the story featuring characters that eventually come out of the story and populate the main world of the story and then the author steps in and eventually the author addresses you itself so the world jumps from the world of the book to the actual world we are all inhabiting and this is a way of well, it's a strategy to make people aware of the way we shift from different worlds, different ontological levels every time in today's reality, when we watch TV, when you listen to the radio, whatever. To give you an example, this is the difference between postmodernism and modernism, because modernism had an epistemological dominant, it meant that Modernism was mostly concerned with issues of knowledge. How do we know the world? To what extent can we know the world? If you think of stream of consciousness, that was a way of representing the way we think. So it was a way of an inquiry into the way we think, into the way we know the world and we experience it. You see the difference between the two genres? Postmodernist novels exercise this strategy to forefront the switch between different ontologies in many, many different ways. Some do it being overtly metafictional, some do it by mixing different styles and genres in the book, by making you constantly aware that you are reading a book. Postmodern novels can be huge cock blockers at times. Um, some postmodern novels feature weird magical realist elements and mixed with otherwise straight narratives that keep reminding you that what you're reading is not actually uh, hap happening in the real world. In this sense, postmodernism can be a very political genre in a way. It reminds you of the value of knowing that you're switching between different ontologies all the time. And that's, a, well, it's something that sometimes go undervalued because postmodernism is generally considered some kind of deconstructive genre of literature which tears down every possible institution but doesn't come, it doesn't offer that, well, too many solutions to the problems of the world. This is McHale's take on the topic. I like it a lot because it offers you a way to distinguish and to put a barrier around the genre, which is something useful when you're discussing literature. Otherwise, everything can be really postmodern, otherwise people will tell you that the Don Quixote is postmodern, because actually it is in many ways, it uses that strategy, but not to that end, not necessarily, not in that way. I like McHale's book, it's a masterpiece, really. Another take on the topic is that, a very famous and seminal one, is Linda Achions in her book A Poetics of Postmodernism which I can show to you because some other motherfucker took it from the library of my university. A Poetics of Postmodernism focuses on another issue in postmodernist fiction, which is its questioning of official history and of grand narratives. Postmodernist fiction focuses on how all history, since you know history through historiography, through accounts, like lists of facts, of true data, all history is in a way a narrative, and so fiction. When we tell the story of a war that happened in the past, we inevitably have to refer to some sources, and these sources were collected by leaving something out, by selecting some data instead of other, by, uh, for instance, underlying something that was crucial to the author, in this sense, it's not like there's nothing, there's no truth out there, but historical truth always includes an element of fiction. The point of postmodernist literature, according to um, Linda Hutchion, is to give voice to the minorities that are not represented in official, in official history, official historiography. That's why Linda Hutchion calls postmodernist fiction historiographic metafiction, because it refers specifically to the dark areas of history, and it's also metafictional in its representation, because it wants to underline and to make clear that all fiction, uh, every story you tell, features an element of selection, features a mechanical process behind it. Linda Hutchin in her study, which is another one of those studies you need to read if you're interested in the topic, 
uh, focuses, for instance, on eccentric characters, which are crucial according to her in postmodernist fiction, because they give a different perspective on historical events, because usually they don't come from the main like ethnic or cultural group in a society, and so they can represent a minority or comment on a specific situation in a country or in the world. Now me, personally, and these are really only my two cents, I'm not that much convinced by Linda Achion's point, um, as much as McHale's, because to me postmodernist fiction as a fan and reader has always been a bit more about television and pop culture and weird movies than about, well, I don't know, minorities and post-colonial culture and, I don't know, uh, rewriting history, even though all those things are there, of course. So, yeah, uh, in the Linda Action's point is an interesting starting point if you want to discuss postmodernism related with postcolonial studies and postcolonial theory. So, it's another book you have to read if you're interested in the topic. The last book I'm going to name, and everyone knowing postmodernism even marginally know this guy, is by a guy called Frederick Jameson, and I'm referring to postmodernism, or the late cultural, the, the cultural logic of late capitalism. Frederick Jameson is not exactly the biggest fan of postmodernism out there. He is a Marxist critic, and he believes postmodernism is one of the like the products of um, capitalist society today. And he is not a huge fan, as I said. One, I'm going to give you one example. Uh, Jameson defines pastiche as a quintessential element of postmodernism. Postmodernist tendency to mix different genres and styles and registers, high, uh, high art and low art, to mix all these different things in order to achieve an ironic purpose. But, it says, postmodernism doesn't do, do this in order to like satirize about stuff, in order to comment, to commit politically. It does this without really a purpose, just for the sake of it. It's like satire, but without any political aim. And this is apparently bad, because being political is very important in the world, if you want to change it and to make it better. I I'm not even joking, that's like Jameson point, I'm not like uh, mocking him at all, like that's a, well, sense point, I think. You see, if like me you mainly read because you like the stories, all this talk of politics is gonna leave you a bit dazed, but it's a sense uh, discussion. Another crucial book on the topic, which is way more rooted in literature, is The Political Unconscious by Frederick Jameson, which again talks about the way O4 deals with the political in their books, even if they don't really know they are doing it, they are doing it all the same, and it's another seminal text for postmodernism, is, well, I already told you, The Political Unconscious, whatever. Um, the point is that that book refers to a selection of texts, like Lord Jim by Joseph Conrad, a few others, check them out. Don't read The Political Unconscious if you haven't read those texts, because it's gonna be incomprehensible. It's not gonna be that clear even if you have read them, if you haven't, like, don't do it. That's it. That was meant to be just a general introduction to the genre, mainly because I'm not I'm that much of an expert myself. I have only read this and a few other key texts on the topic. I really am no expert, especially when it comes to postmodernism as a philosophy or a theory. When it gets away from the actual stories, then it gets incomprehensible or borderline incomprehensible to me. I will film maybe some other videos, maybe about some key postmodernist texts, other stuff like that. If you like this one, please comment in, in the sec comment section below. Let me know if you've read these texts, what you think of them. These books, the sad thing is that they are all rather expensive. The best thing you can do, you, you, I think you can find them cheap on Amazon if you look for them second hand. Otherwise, the best thing you can do is look for a library around you. If you live close to a university, they'll probably have them in their library. Even if you're not a student, I think you can somehow take them out of the library if you sign some paper, whatever. Um, anyway, let me know what you think of this video, of this idea. Let me know if you're a fan of postmodernist fiction, if you think it's stupid, what's your relationship with it. I'm really curious. Thank you so much for watching once again, guys. I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>